Al zo lang als de mens en dolfijn elkaar kennen, lijken ze tot elkaar aangetrokken. Het geloof in de vermogens van dolfijnen neemt haast mythische vormen aan. Mensen willen dolfijnen zien, met ze zwemmen en ze aanraken. Behalve sommige vissers dan. Die zien dolfijnen liever dood dan levend. Milieuorganisaties spreken zelfs van moord. Want, zo stellen ze, dolfijnen zijn intelligente wezens. Maar wanneer is een dier intelligent? Op het Hawaiiaanse eiland Oahu doet de milieuorganisatie Earth Trust onderzoek naar dolfijnen. De gedragsbioloog Ken Martin is één van hun onderzoekers. Actually, as a biologist studying the evolution of intelligence, I would define intelligence mainly as flexibility of behavior, plasticity or flexibility in the face of new circumstances. Being able to change your behavior or adapt it to new circumstances. And, I mean, from our anthropomorphic point of view, that requires figuring things out and thinking. But at least from an objective point of view, it's watching an animal be able to come up with appropriate, adaptable responses that are flexible to new situations. Voor onderzoeker Martin zijn er twee werelden. De wereld van de getrainde dolfijnen boven water, waar het warm en onaangenaam is. En de wereld onder water, waar het spontane gedrag van de dolfijnen en de koelte hem tot rust brengen. Het is een wereld onder water, het is een wereld van water en het is een wereld van sound. Je kunt hier in de background dat ze constant maken sound. Een heel akoestisch wereld. En de akoestische part van hun brein is heel well goed ontwikkeld. What's the most attractive for you in dolphins? For me, the, the most attractive is that you've got this animal that seems to have some kind of mind inside because it has such an interesting response to things, even to people. There's a mind in there of some kind, and just exploring it and finding out what it's like is, is what's exciting to me. In augustus verscheen van zijn hand een artikel in de Scientific American over de ringenkunst van de dolfijnen. To me as a scientist when I first saw them it really blew me away to use the appropriate expression. Uh, the most amazing thing to me about the rings when I first saw them was that one it was a ring of air that kept its shape, kept a perfect circle uh, like you see in the examples. And not only did it keep its shape, it was even traveling downward in the water. So myself as a scientist, I, I saw it and I thought, whoa, that's air. What is that doing going down? Staying stable and staying down in the water. So I really wondered how they did it. And actually what, what we eventually ended up doing was looking at the rings carefully and trying to understand the hydrodynamics behind them. The dolphins are doing all kinds of hydrodynamic tricks. They could be professors of fluid mechanics at a university, as you'd expect. I mean, we would be very surprised if they weren't complete aces and acrobats with, with the water and air like they are. But it's so interesting. It's a form of play. It's them playing. And the really interesting thing is they're not playing with something that's presented to them to play with. They create it themselves. And we found that the most interesting thing about it is that there are many different hydrodynamic methods they use to create the rings. So in a way, it's a matter of experimentation. And complex play like that is usually the indicator of a very interested, uh, active uh, brain in an animal. Ondanks hun schoonheid zijn de ringen maar bijzaak voor Martin. Zijn werkelijke studie gaat over een zeer lastige vraag. Namelijk de vraag of dolfijnen een vorm van zelfbewustzijn hebben. Well, the interest in science and studying self-awareness in dolphins is that everybody considers dolphins to be pretty intelligent animals. They do well with training in aquaria. They show a lot of very innovative behavior. The kind that, that really suggests that there's some kind of mind in there. So we wanted to explore it because 
self-awareness itself had been explored in primates using mirrors and exploring that same, using that same experimental technique in dolphins was an obvious thing to try. Especially in our lab where our work is done without any food reward, it made an excellent experimental uh, paradigm to work in. What is the paradigm? The basic paradigm of the work is you're trying to determine if an animal knows that it's itself in a, in a mirror. Presumably, if an animal knows that it's itself in a mirror, it has some kind of self-concept that it enables it to do that. And when a mirror is used uh, to test animals, really only man and the great apes test out to know that it's themselves in a mirror. And, and the test is, is does the animal use the mirror for self-examination or does the animal use it for social behavior? Does it mistake it for another individual? So it's a natural question to wonder where dolphins fit in the scheme. Do they fit in this exclusive club that man and the great apes are in? Or are they like the rest of the more you know, common animals? Wanneer dolfijnen voor het eerst een vreemde dolfijn ontmoeten, gedragen ze zich zeer luidruchtig en zijn ze constant onderzoekend. Ze laten de ander geen moment met rust. Dit sociale gedrag bij dolfijnen was het uitgangspunt voor het spiegel-experiment van Martin. Zien de dolfijnen hun eigen spiegelbeeld als een andere dolfijn en gaan ze sociaal gedrag vertonen of herkennen ze zichzelf? Martin plakte spiegelend folie op de ruit. Daarmee werd het venster een doorzichtspiegel. Zo kon Martin de dolfijnen bestuderen terwijl de dolfijnen zichzelf de spiegel zagen. Een videocamera registreerde alle bewegingen van de dolfijnen voor latere analyse. Als de ruit een spiegel is, reageren de dolfijnen op hun eigen beeld veel minder fel dan wanneer ze een nieuwe soortgenoot tegenkomen. Ze draaien wat voor de spiegel, laten hun tanden zien, bewegen het hoofd op en neer en ze lijken de samenhang te controleren tussen zichzelf en hun spiegelbeeld. En als ze een voorwerp hebben, lijken ze zich helemaal duidelijk bewust van hun gedrag en het spiegelbeeld. Duidelijk geen sociaal gedrag volgens Martin. This individual has brought a pebble over to the mirror and he's playing with it in front of it. Now, is that social behavior? Is that him battling some other dolphin or defending his space, you know? No, it certainly doesn't look like it. I think you'd call that playing with the image. Uh, I think they enjoy seeing themselves play and the, the object as well. And again, it's, a, I guess, a very elaborate form of contingency checking. Here he's brought a, a, a toy surfboard over and has put it against the mirror. Uh, again, <coughs> that's probably not the way he would interact socially with another dolphin, is to bring that so surfboard over against it. Uh, look at this. She's brought on her pectoral fin, she's brought over a leaf in front of the mirror and she's playing with it. The animals often do play with currents. In fact, this individual, Tinkerbell, is the actual queen of currents. Come on, guys. Come on, Pootie. Come on, come on, guys. Come on, Laucani. Now, this is Laucani. We actually had her in a mirror mark test. And in the mirror mark test, you put 